You can fertilize with things like miracle Grow. Uh, roses love the nutrients that are in fertilizers like miracle Grow. But there's a difference between miracle Grow, which is just providing nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sometimes uh, a few minerals, and feeding those rose bushes from the soil, where we are really focused on life in the soil, beneficial bacteria, beneficial fungi, good protozoa, good nematodes. And that life in the soil will then provide those roses everything they need. You'll find that if you do a soil test, everything evens out and everything uh, normalizes by focusing on life in the soil. I'm John Valentino, I'm a landscape architect and a landscape contractor. Been in business over 40 years now, looking at many beautiful roses and stopping to smell them, at least I try to. We are very grateful to Diane from the Rose Society of Saddleback Mountain to agree to come on camera and talk to us about the roses, the rose garden, the effect of John and Bob's. We really appreciate it. It's rare that I've been able to convince somebody, so I don't know why Diane agreed to it, but we are so happy she did, and she will be on this video extensively explaining their garden from their perspective. The garden right now looks incredible. We have abundant blooms. It's really prolific. I've noticed a huge difference and so has a lot of the members and our visitors. And I'm very happy to be a part of providing this love of nature for the community. I'm the Mission Viejo Library Garden Coordinator from Saddleback Mountain Rose Society and we are responsible for helping to maintain this library rose garden for the pleasure and enjoyment of all the residents and people who come and visit. We're really happy that this year we had the unique opportunity to have a generous donation from John Valentino of John and Bob's. In the beginning of November, John Valentino of John and Bob's very generously brought some bags of the blend product and it was a time when the roses were not looking great and his comment was, the worse they look now, the better they're going to look later. Then in January, we had our annual rose pruning clinic where we have our volunteers and members from the club come and deadhead all the roses, including all the leaves. And then in February, I applied some compost to the garden in the form of some worm castings. And then again in March, we had another generous donation from John and Bob's of three 40 pound bags of the blend product, which I distributed about three cups to each rose, 95% of the garden. As a test, the blend product was applied to about 95% of the roses. There was a few roses in the far back right-hand side that we did not use the blend product, just to use as a test to compare it to the roses that were given the blend product. This year, last year, we did not have this many blooms. Visitors and members have just noticed that this is the best the garden has looked in many years, and we're so happy with the product. Last week in Southern California, this section, we had 95 to 100 degree temperatures, which almost burnt several blooms that were out already. And I think the blend, in a combination with the compost we put over it, have really helped protect our roses from the extreme heat. You can see the ones that received our treatment and the ones that didn't. Less vitality, less bloom. They still look like rose bushes, but they're not in their glory. I've never seen anything work better on roses. There's lots of theories and people have their favorites and lots of products used on roses and a lot of them are very good, but I've never seen anything as powerful as blend. What all our videos and all our products are built upon is there's a difference in rose bloom quality and quantity and the look of the bush itself when you focus on the soil health. And we think that's the whole key 
to growing roses that don't have pest and disease and that bloom to their maximum. So many people think of roses as high maintenance and are concerned about including them in the garden because of that perception. When in actuality, I don't think of them as high maintenance at all, especially if you focus on the health of the soil. If you build life in the soil, you're going to have roses that rarely get pests and disease. Many roses, you don't have to do anything special with pruning. You could just cut off dead flowers. There's many varieties that respond. And even the varieties that you're supposed to prune a certain way, if you don't prune a certain way, they're still going to perform great, particularly if you focus on the health of the soil. So I think that's the biggest thing when you're growing roses is let's make that soil healthy and pretty much everything else will take care of itself. If you want to deadhead roses, obviously that's a little more work, but that does help them rebloom and takes away the negative appearance of spent roses. But very easy to care for if you focus on that health of the soil and you can do that with just one application of our blend in the spring. I do that one application in March and they're pretty self-sustaining. So we have a few related videos where we talked about roses. Uh, you might remember the earlier one when we came to Mission Viejo and did the talk uh, to the group and then did the initial application of the products. 